So today we're going to learn how to use the z-score formula in a normal distribution. Now this particular notation or statistical notation that we are using today is given by n parentheses mu comma sigma. Now in this Greek symbols that we are seeing, mu is represented by the mean and the sigma is the is represent representation of the standard deviation now in a stand, in a normal distribution we have a bell shaped curve where in the center of the distribution is your mu or your mean and the distance away from the mean or the spread of your distribution is given by the value of the standard deviation now this is our normal curve wherein the curve is bell-shaped and symmetrical. Now for today, we're going to use a standard normal distribution, which is obviously similar to this curve. However, we are now going to use a standardized value with this particular range. So think about our values as a number line, where in the center is your zero value, and we have the left side and the right side of our normal distribution given by negative 3 and positive 3. So the range of values in a standard normal distribution will be from negative 3 up until positive 3. And to standardize a given normal distribution from the raw data into its standard normal distribution, we will use this formula that will help us convert the raw value into its standardized form, which is given by x minus mu all over sigma, wherein mu is the mean and sigma is your standard deviation. Now the z-score is what we are going to need to find the standardized value of a given raw data. So we have z equal to x minus mean all over the standard deviation, which is the formula that we use to standardize the given value of x using the mean and the standard deviation of our sample. Now in this particular example, I have here a given normal distribution wherein the mean is equal to 37 and a standard deviation of 5. Now we're going to standardize an actual score inside this normal distribution given by x equal to 43. So if mean is 37, this is 43, we're going to convert this value into a standardized form. So given the formula for the z-score, which is x minus mean all over the standard deviation, by direct substitution, we'll be able to find the standardized value or z-score of our normal distribution given by 1.2. So now we have the standardized score of 1.2 from our raw data or raw score of 43. So this is now our representation of our standard normal distribution wherein the center is at 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So our location for our standardized value of 1.2 is located right here. So from 0, since it's positive, we are now just estimating its location on the positive side of your standard normal distribution given by z equal to 1.2. Now it might still seem a little bit vague why we need to use the formula to find the z-score of a given distribution. Now let's apply this particular concept or theorem to be able to understand better the importance of the z-score in some statistical problem. Now in this word problem, we have two tests, the SAT and the ACT. Patricia scores 680 points on the mathematics parts of the SAT. The distribution of SAT scores in reference population is symmetric and single peaked with mean of 500 and standard deviation of 100. On the other hand, Manuel takes the American College Testing or ACT and his mathematics test score is 27 points. Now ACT scores also follow a symmetric single peaked distribution but with a mean of 18 points and a standard deviation of 6. Now let's find the standardized scores for both students and assuming that both tests measure the same kind of ability, let's find out who scored higher between the two 
individuals. Now, in showing the work for this particular word problem, we're going to use our z-score formula to see who scored higher. Now, let's write out or let's organize our numerical value in the problem. So we know that Patricia's score is 680 with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. This is, of course, in reference with all the other students who took the SAT um, examination where Patricia participated in. Now, in the, in the other hand, M Manuel took a different test, the ACT test, and he scored 27. Now, by just looking at their numerical value, we could see that Patricia scored higher between Manuel because her score is 680 points and Manuel only scored 27. But in this particular case, the mean of the mean value or the average score of all the students who took the ACT examination is 18 with a standard deviation of 6. So we really cannot compare right now by just looking at the raw score who scored higher because they, they took a different, a, two different tests. So what we need to do is to use the z-score or the formula that I showed you a while ago to be able to verify who really scored higher in this particular math test. So this is the summary of Patricia and Manuel's SAT and ACT scores. So for Patricia, she scored 680 points on her SAT examination with a mean of 500 and 100. Now using the z-score formula, which is x minus mu over sigma, we found out that, the, that Patricia's SAT score for the z-score value is 1.8. On the other hand, Manuel's ACT math scores, which is x equal to 27 points, with a given mean of 18 and 6 points, he got a z-score value of 1.5. Now, after we standardize their scores, we can now tell who scored higher. So in this particular distribution, we can compare that a z-score of 1.5 is lower than a z-score of 1.8 based on our standard normal distribution. So to answer the question on our word problem, we can now verify that Patricia scored higher than Manuel on their math test because Patricia's z-score, which is 1.8, is higher than Manuel's z-score of 1.5.